Hey everyone, it's Emily Fox. Today's video is going to be about the best books that I've read so far in 2024. Kind of a top five with a special mention for a nonfiction book. I feel like I've been a little bit in the funk this year so far, but when I look at all the books that I've read, which let me put them on the screen month by month, I believe I finished 28 books <laughs> in the first three months of the year. So like not a reading slump. It just, I felt like I wasn't reading amazing books, but I think it's just me because I did not struggle to make a top five. So clearly it's a me thing. It's the weather, okay? You can tell it's kind of dark and moody right now, which I think works for the setup, but top five of fantastic books that I would recommend plus a nonfiction recommendation. I usually do these top five just randomly, but not today. I'm going to try to do from special mention to favorite. So the special mention for fiction would be Part of Your World, which is a romance, an adult romance, which I'm not usually a huge romance reader just because I hate... <laughs> I've grown to really resent like insta-love, uh, very like YA kind of romances and this one was very different. You had warned me that it was going to be better and it was so much so that even though I listened to it as an audiobook, which romance audiobook, again the cringe factor could have been too much, but no I was giggling, you know, kicking my feet very happily <laughs> during like 90%, like 99% of this book. There's like an hour in there where the female character drove me nuts, but otherwise it was great. So you have this, this man who is from a small town I don't want to say too much about him, actually. You need to explore and just listen or read the book. And then you have her who is more rich, she's more educated, she's a doctor, comes from a uh, family of doctors, and like she has a reputation to withhold, and she's from the big city, and she ends up in this small town. The book literally starts with her in a ditch, and this stranger comes and help her. And I liked it a lot. Like, four point something star which again romance for me not usually my cup of tea but this one i really enjoy so much so that i put the second book on uh my waiting list at the library also it's an audiobook which again could have been too much but no i really really enjoyed it like i would find times to listen to this which i don't do that super often with audiobooks like i need to be really really invested in a story and i was this was great definitely recommend it if you are a romance reader and if you're not and you prefer like a little bit more mature characters because she is in her 30s so like an adult and yeah I I liked it so am I fully converted to romance maybe not but we're working on it so in fourth position we have other birds which this is my third book by the author and I think I'm converted I feel like her books give me summer beach read kind of books a little bit or like fall like very cozy in their own way. And in this one, you're following this young girl who her mother passed away and she inherited her apartment in this coastal town in a small town. She goes there and she ends up befriending the people that all uh, live around her. So you have a little bit of like found family vibes a little bit. And even though they're technically ghosts, I would still not call this a ghost story, like a little bit of magical realism, but again, it's usually not my main genre. And in this case, I did really like it. It's again, a small portion. I feel like it was definitely more about all of these characters have had like a rough past and they find friendships, family, and just, it's good vibes. <laughs> Which, like, that's how I would describe her books. So, good vibes. I've enjoyed it. Uh, I feel like towards the end, there's a bit more of action, which I didn't feel like was that necessary, to be honest. I was just enjoying the ride, and I think you might too. So, if you're looking for a new summer read, I would recommend this one. I really enjoyed it. Again, like a four point something. I rounded it up to five stars. So, I liked it, and I will be reading a lot more by the author because my library has a bunch of her books, so I will listen to those. Then we have Goblin Emperor, which this book had been on my shelf for like five, six years at least. I had seen this book going around when I first started watching booktube, and uh, people were describing it as an adult fantasy standalone, which there aren't enough of those. There are too many series. And frankly, I feel like I go through waves of like wanting books to be full series, long series that I can like lose myself and, and then just being resentful that I'm in the middle of like 50 series. <laughs> and this was refreshing because even though there are companion novels, you do not need to read them. Like this is a standalone. And I really enjoyed it. Again, got really emotionally invested in the character. He is kind of a rejected son. Her father is the emperor and... He was the son of like the second wife. He didn't really choose her, blah, 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 drama. And he is put in a remote location. But unfortunately, or is it unfortunate? Uh, the emperor and his other brothers all die in mysterious circumstances. And he is forced to become the emperor. So you're following his journey like day to day of trying to 
figure out what he's going to be doing and trying to figure out political intrigue. People are the enemies, are they allies, and just trying to survive through the whole thing. And again, I still feel like this felt a bit cozy, even though, because it's just so day-to-day -day and the main character is very likable. And I just ended up really enjoying it. The only thing I would mention is that there are a few sections that are written like old English and like English is not my first language. And I've never like been thought what each word means. I mean, context clue, you can figure it out. So it's not that difficult, but I just wanted to throw it out there. There are a few words, even like the names of like the hierarchy at court, whatever, they have different names than what we have in our world. Again, fantasy world is fine, but like might take you a second, but overall, was invested, I enjoyed it. Kind of a murder mystery, like I said, but still kind of cozy. I think this was a pleasant surprise. I feel like it used to have a little bit of hype, but I haven't heard a lot of people talk about it since, and this is worth it. When was this published, actually? I feel like if this is older-ish, 2014, it's 10 years old, which that, that does not sound old, but I feel like on the internet, we tend to always talk about the newest releases, so I do think it's worth it. If your library has it, if you find it, use bookstore, definitely pick it up. The next two are books that I've read because of you which like I thought this would be an interesting challenge to do just in general reading more of your favorites because over time you either follow me because you like me or my cats which <laughs> or because we have similar tastes or sometimes the opposite you hate everything I love but everything I hate you love so you pick those I think all of those reasons are totally fair um but this one I picked up because of you and it is a little bit outside of my comfort zone and I loved it so much so that I'm currently reading actually another book by the author so like so this is 10 minutes, 38 seconds in this strange world. So this is a heavy book. Do want to warn you because definitely some trigger warnings. But you're following a character and the book begins by her dying. So like, <laughs> again, heavy. She was murdered. She was a sex worker and she was left in a dumpster. That's literally how the book starts. And then for the first part of the book, you're following her for the 10 minutes and, you know, 20, 38 seconds that her brain is still functioning. And you have all the flashbacks of her life and how she got there and all the more important events and especially the most important people in her life. And you grow really attached to them. And then in the second part, you can see how her death affects them. And like, there's a little bit of, you know, things happen. Uh, there was a section I missed the eyes, missed the eyes. We're just going to say that. And yeah, I really liked it. Again, definitely a heavy book but I do tend to like those and this one worked. Like I said, it's a bit like historical fiction, literary fiction, just a little bit outside of my comfort zone. And like I said, really enjoyed it. I bought two more of her books and one of them I'm currently reading and I have a good feeling. So yes, five star, do recommend. And then number one position. I feel like everyone can guess if you've seen any of my videos this year because this was the first book that I read this year. And we're gonna say it's the best book that I've read so far this year. I feel like when I finished it, I was like, this is a tentative five star because it's the first book in probably a quartet or a trilogy, the author's not sure, um, adult fantasy series. So I feel like, you know, I feel like it could crash and burn in the second book. It happens, but I am hopeful. I feel like there's a ton of potential here. The plot is so complicated to explain that I've been jokingly calling this a MLM, like a pyramid scheme. <laughs> Because that's kind of how that society functions, because you have the main character who was part of a different kingdom and they were conquered by the hierarchy, the Catan Republic, which they're calling it the hierarchy. I didn't tell you the title. This is the will of the many. I get distracted. So he's now trying to survive there. His whole family was, as far as he knows, he's trying to survive and then someone takes him under his wing and he sends him on a mission to try and solve a murder mystery in this school which is kind of magical school kind of not they're learning skills that will teach them magic he doesn't want to use the magic because the magic system is what <laughs> is the mlm the behind scheme because people at the bottom give their will their energy which creates power and like strength and stuff so the people at the eight position do that and then seven blah blah, blah. so the people at the top are like stronger than like I don't know how many people, but a lot of people. So he's trying to avoid being part of that, but he kind of doesn't really have a choice. And that's kind of what happens in the first book. He is in that magical school, that school, that school trying to solve the murder mystery, but also continuing to pass because it's really difficult and he might not survive. Like a lot of drama, trying to make some allies, but trying to still spy and not die. <laughs> so a lot happens. 
clearly. I mean, it's a thick book and a lot happens. I love when like thick books actually have content. This one is like over 600 pages and you get really invested in his friendships. Uh, there's a little bit of romance, which frankly, how dumb can you be? Um, because this is not the time. <laughs> there are a few moments that was like, eh, like there's one thing that I feel like was really convenient and I do feel like the, the main character doesn't sleep as much as he probably needs. But I overall was really invested. I feel like towards the end, the author makes some choices that I wasn't expected. I was pleasantly surprised. And the ending, I don't feel like it's a cliffhanger. I feel like people debated that with me, but I, I feel like it makes you want to continue, but I don't feel like it's a cliffhanger. And yeah, uh, unfortunately, we do have to wait for the second book. So you might want to wait if you don't like to wait in between books, which I should have, but this was your recommendation and you were right. This was great. I enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to uh, continuing the series, but I also want to read. I had another book by the author on my shelf, so I will try that one. And hopefully, maybe a new favorite author. If not, I'll just continue the series. <laughs> And then last but not least, I wanted to recommend some nonfiction because as always, I'm trying to read more of them and it was really hard to choose one. I need to do more videos like beginner friendly nonfiction. I've done some in the past if you're interested, but I think the best one that I've read this year was this one, which was a tough read. Uh, this is The Seven Necessary Sins for Women and Girls, which is a nonfiction about feminism slash just following the author. She seems like a really cool person. I feel like that helps in nonfiction books whenever they're talking about including portions of their lives. And she... Is a journalist and activist. Doesn't say so in the back, but I'm pretty sure she was born in Egypt to a Muslim family. She lived in Dubai, she lived in the UK, and now lives in uh, the US. And she participated to, like I said, she was an activist. At one point, there's a story she tells, she, she tells that she got her hand and her arm broken. Like, anyway, she has lived a really interesting life. And she goes through the seven necessarily sin that women and girls should do to try and dismantle patriarchy. So you have anger, attention, profanity, ambition, power of violence, and lust. Personally, I preferred the first couple ones. You can probably tell from the amount of post-its in the beginning. And I thought it was really, really interesting, unfortunately relatable. And yeah, I thought that was great. I do think I would have not enjoyed it more, but I would have gotten more out of it as a teenager. I feel like younger women and girls should definitely read this. I feel like, yes, it's angering because obviously that kind of topic, but kind of in an empowering way. I don't really like the word empowering, but kind of. So if you are looking to read more nonfiction, I would highly recommend it. I had already had another book by the author on my TBR, which I didn't realize was the same author. So I will be picking that up because I'm curious to read more by her. But yes, this was great. Uh, you can tell sh she is a journalist. I feel like the way it's written. And yeah, would recommend. Out of 28 books so far that I've read this year, these are the top five plus one nonfiction that I really enjoyed and I would recommend. All the other ones, some of them are good. A few big disappointment. I think my biggest disappointment was, uh, I don't remember the whole title, it's too long. That was my biggest disappointment so far this year, um, but it's not even out yet. <laughs> as soon as it is I want to hear what you guys think about it because to me it was such a that's it I would love to know in the comment section the best books you have read so far this year for the first quarter of the year anything that you think we would enjoy thumbs up subscribe I'll put more videos on the screen that I recommend you check out including some of my most recent ones and I will see you in a coming video very soon bye